And I want to bring in clinical psychologist Dr. B.J. Freeman, as well as Shannon, who is an autism advocate and the author of the Thinking Person's Guide to Autism. Uh, thank you both for joining in this discussion. And Shannon, I, wa I want to start with you because you have a personal experience with this concept of trying to cure autism. My son is just an amazing, wonderful kid. He's 16, year old, he's 16 years old now. When he was first diagnosed with autism at age two, I was not given any answers by the mainstream medical establishment that I could really hold on to and do something with. I was told that I'd, maybe I could give him some speech therapy and you know, see what happens. And in my mind, I only thought of Rain Man and my son's gonna end up in an institution, right? So what I did do was go online and I found all these groups that would tell me like, well, what you need to do is give your son these supplements. What you need to do is give your son vitamin B12 injections. And I found doctors who were more than happy to set me up with this enormous amount of supplements, shots, treatments. I mean, just the sheer volume of everything that they said I could do to fix my son every step of it perpetuating the fear and stigma and misunderstanding that autism is treatable and curable when autism is how your brain works. Autism is something that needs accommodation and this fear and stigma made me not see my wonderful, amazing son Leo for who he is, he's the greatest kid. And all I could see was that I needed to fix him. For instance, my son, like many autistic people, has oral sensitivities. So getting him to take pills at all, getting him to take shots at all, and there were just, there was, I can't even remember because it was so, I had to make this huge spreadsheet. Oh, that, this is, there it is. <laughs> this that is, is all the stuff that I was doing to my son yeah. every day, this magnesium, these Emla creams to give him vitamin B12 shots. None of this was backed up by legitimate science. None of science. this was paid by your insurance company, right? No. So how much were you spending on these treatments? It was really a lot of money, a and lot. it's not realistic at all for other people, and it's not based, like you said, in evidence. Yeah. It is based in fear and misinformation. BJ, I want to bring you into this conversation with your thoughts on this practice, because I think it is, it's very hard to sit here and judge any parent who's trying to figure out what to do. I have been pretty myself involved in trying to stop some of this for years because it is child abuse. And what works is applied behavior analysis. The research is very clear now that intensive behavior programs which are individualized for each child with autism, looking at their strengths and weaknesses, not a cookie cutter approach. We break things down into small steps. We teach it systematically. We do things because we're reinforced. And what applied behavior analysis does when it's done correctly is systematically looks at a child and says, what is it this child needs to learn? How does this particular child learn? Because all kids learn differently. And if the child isn't learning, it's not the child. It's never the child. It's either what we're teaching or how we're teaching it. And so we take a look and teach kids systematically the skills they need to learn. And my uh, understanding is this is actually covered by insurance, right? Yes, Behavioral there. therapy is required to be covered by insurance. Sometimes. Okay, I gotta do a little no. bragging. <laughs> in the state of California, in 2011, we became one of about 34 states that cover autism right. therapies through private health insurance and through nonprofit that I started, Special Needs Network. We were one of the lead organizations pushing insurance companies to cover this gold star right. therapy that Dr. B.J. Friedman <laughs> is talking about, so that thousands and thousands of kids throughout the state, including kids who get Medicaid, uh, can have access to these therapies. And now I gotta tell you about Dr. B.J. Freeman. She is like the <laughs> god of autism. <laughs> Not only because she's my son's doctor, but she probably diagnosed about a third of the kids in the county of Los Angeles. She helped write the definition of autism. So we owe so much to you and the autism community, <laughs> Dr. Freeman. Well, and Ariva, to both you and Shannon for being so open and honest about your own experiences, I think the thing that I've learned in listening to this conversation is that this attempt to look at your child and make them normal, really for any child, yeah. and, I, and I love this concept of making your, helping your child be the best version of themselves.